Hello everyone, we're going, it's Rupert the Red here doing a, another Pokemon match with you. Uh, this match for some reason seemed to have recorded with no audio whatsoever, so I'm just going to be doing a voiceover for this. Um, some people, some of my friends have been asking me to do some more voiceovers lately, so I'll probably be doing that more often with some of my other matches. But let's jump right into it, shall we? So we got Grimmsnarl and a Ho Ho lead against a Yavetto and another Grimmsnarl lead. So this is a bit of an interesting match. So I'm thinking the Yavetto is probably going to be my biggest threat. <clears throat> and I probably want to try and get rid of it as soon as possible. Now the thing with the Yavetto is it could go either physical or special. So it's a little hard to guess which one it is. Now it does have its signature move Oblivion Wing which is a special attack. So most Yavettos tend to be more special attacking rather than uh, physical. Now it does have access to the move Sucker Punch which is a great dark type move for it to have so a lot of the times it could, it has a, not a lot of times but there is still a chance that it could go physical so gotta be careful with that. So here it is starting off by going Dynamax. So it's a pretty popular Dynamax Pokemon, maybe like top 5 Dynamaxes right now because it has such great offensive stats. The only, and it's one of the more sp uh, speedy uh, legendaries out there because most legendaries seem to have a base 90 speed while Yavetto has a base 97 so it's a little bit faster and it has great uh, <coughs> sorry, has great attack stats of 131 so it's really really strong but as I've mentioned a few times, Ho-Ho doesn't care because it has a base 154 special defense so even if it is a special attacker it's not going to hurt too much so his Grimmsnarl is going to be setting up Reflect, meaning that our physical damage are going to be doing less damage. And I go for Light Screen thinking it will be a special attacker. So his attack should be doing less damage to me. But we're not entirely sure. So he's going to go for the Max Darkness, Lance into a ho ho Does a little more than 50 damage, maybe like 60, 70 damage. So not too bad. Now unfortunately our special defense does fall, which really sucks for us. But we're going to be going for the Max Airstream, hoping we can maybe try out speeding. I do a little bit more damage than he did to me, I'm pretty sure. Can't really tell too much, of course. So thanks to the speed boost. My Grimmsnarl can now outspeed his Grimmsnarl, however, I'm pretty sure I still don't outspeed the Yavetto. So what we're going to try to do probably is I'm probably just going to be focusing all my damage onto the Yavetto just to try and get rid of it. Uh, but I'm, you know, I'm still trying to decide, so I'm like, eh, you know what, let me set up Reflect just in case it is a physical attacking Yavetto instead. So, because <clears throat> we want to be, you know, on the safe side and make sure nothing happens to us too crazy. So he's going to be going for the scary face that's going to harshly reduce our speed so that plus one speed is now a minus one speed. So he's going to be going for his own max air stream. It's going to do quite a lot of damage to my own Grimmsnarl so I'm like ouch that, that really hurts so yeah that's not so great for us. But that's still fine because we're just going to hit him again with another max air stream. Thankfully like I said he didn't target us and we did some okay damage. I feel like we did a low roll that time instead. So my Grimmsnarl thankfully still has <clears throat> excuse me, plus two speed so that's pretty good. So this time we're probably going to go and try and KO the Yavetto this time around. Uh, so I'm just trying to decide which move would be better if I want to try and go for a non-max Airstream, if I want to go for Max Flare. But I decided, you know what, let me target the Grimmsnarl to try and get rid of it this turn instead. So there he goes doing scary face once again, lowering the speed on my ho-ho constantly. Now I'm on a minus two speed, so I'm really, really slow. <clears throat> He's going to be doing max darkness for some reason on my Grimmsnarl, who has a four times resistance to dark moves, so I don't know why he would do that. So we already have a light screen up and I have a reflect up just in case. So we're going to hit him with the spare break. Does some damage lower his special attack so now he's not doing so much damage and thankfully he was not a weakness policy so hopefully with the smack steel spike we'll take out his grim snarl we're just a little bit short of it so I was like damn <coughs> I was real close to knocking it out but whatever we get the defense boost so my hole is now looking a little bit more tanky than usual the only problem is we have almost no speed <laughs> due to the Grim Snarl doing two scary faces on me after doing max airstream so I'm at a minus two speed so I'm the sl one of the slowest things out on the field now so we're probably going to be switching out to the Landris just to do an attack drop and keep my Grim Snarl alive for a little bit longer just in case of anything 
Uh, so I'm thinking, oh, you know, what should I do here? Maybe I'll recover with the whole hole just to kind of keep it healthy in case he decides to target me. <clears throat> Unfortunately, my Landris is probably a little bit slower uh, than his Grimmsnarl on Yavetto, especially since he did uh, max airstream earlier. But let's see what happens. So his his Yavetto is going to go for the Oblivion Wing into my Landris probably. Yep. Which Landris has an Assault Vest and we have... Uh, light screen up so it's not going to do too much damage so it recovers a little bit of health but nothing too crazy so it's going to go for the foul play on my ho ho which I which as I predicted was going to do a lot of damage so thankfully I did get to use recover so we're going to heal up basically to almost full health so we got a nice chunk of health back so we're just going to go for rock slide hope we get the double KO and if not we're going to go for the brave bird just in case and knock out whatever it doesn't kill so he's going to go for the oblivion wing one more time goes into my Landorus once again. It's only doing like 30 damage every time it hits me, so it's nothing too crazy. So he's only recovering something like 15 health every time. We luckily still outspeed his Grimmsnarl, which is pretty good. Grimmsnarl barely hangs on, and so does the Yavetto, which I was just like, wow, okay. <clears throat> he goes for the foul play on my Landorus, which does a ton of damage, so... <laughs> It's a good thing Landorus was able to survive. We can maybe try doing something else with Landorus, so... And luckily, the recoil isn't too much from Brave Bird, but Life Orb still hurts just a tiny bit on us. So, uh, we're already uh, one up on the Pokemon on him, so now he brings out his Torkoal. So, I'm like, okay, Torkoal, it's going to boost up fire moves. It, it's a fire Pokemon, and I have Landorus out who has access to Earthquake. Let's go ahead and go for an Earthquake, and then I'm just going to probably Brave Bird the Torkoal if it's still alive, or maybe just heal myself because his, uh, depending on what's going to happen. <laughs> Uh, just to keep my Ho-Ho nice and healthy because Ho-Ho has some pretty... G well, we have that plus one defense stat, so... Uh, now we have that minus two speed, which really sucks. But uh, I'm keeping the Ho-Ho in anyways, just because I'm pretty tanky, so I'm pretty fine with that. So he's going to bring back the Grimmsnarl and bring out his Venusaur. So I'm like, alright. <coughs> so I have to worry too much about the Venusaur. So the Torkoal ends up having a berry that reduces ground damage, so I'm like, oh... That's pretty interesting. Barely did any damage to it, but I did a nice chunk on Venusaur, which is pretty good, I think. So we're just going to heal up with Ho-Ho, go back to full health, and we're going to be nice and dandy from there. So let's see what Historical does. It's going to go with a Burning Jealousy. That probably takes out my Landris, if I'm not mistaken, yep. But Ho-Ho still gets to live, so... And Landris got critted, but I don't think that crit really mattered. I'm pretty sure I was going to get KO'd anyways at 23 health. So I figured, um... Let's bring in Haxorus. Haxorus could probably do something here, right? So bring in the Haxorus. My one and my, my boy. My original boy until we got Ho-Ho uh, allowed into ranked play. So I'm pretty happy with this new Haxorus that I got. So we're going to be using um, one of the newer moves, First Impression, which was introduced in Gen 7. And some Pokemon had access to it in Gen 8, so we're gonna be doing. So we're gonna try and take care of the Venusaur as soon as possible, because I don't think I have to worry too much about the Torkoal, to be honest. Uh, so he's taking his time thinking about what he wants to do, but I'm like, eh, I'm pretty sure I have this in the bag because I still have Grimmsnarl in the back who can get, who can use one last uh, Thunder Wave. So we go for the first impression, does some decent damage. He goes for a Sleep Powder. Ho-Ho luckily avoids the attack, so I'm like, yes, <laughs> we get the KO on the Venusaur. <clears throat> uh, for people that are uh, curious, first impression is, it kind of works just like Fake Out, where it only works on the first turn that the Pokemon's out. Oh, and he goes for the Body Press on the Haxorus, but for some reason that didn't do a lot of damage. I'm kind of surprised by that. Uh, so yeah, first impression works similar to uh, how... Uh, fake out works where it only works on the first turn that the Pokemon is out and it's a priority move so it's a nice surprise move that you can you know sometimes use to just get in some quick chip damage or break a focus ash or something like that um, so I'm thinking here you know what let me try and just deal some damage to the Torgo and I'll get rid of the Grim Snarl with my whole hole so oh, excuse me because the Torkoal is going for that body press, so I'm thinking it's probably going to do some more physical damage than I wanted to. So for now, let's just try and reduce its attack damage with uh, with that uh, with breaking swipe. Breaking swipe's a wonderful move. It's been 
doing wonders for me. So I was going to go for the Foul Player. My Haxorus doesn't do enough damage, which I'm really surprised about. I'm like, really? I'm surprised that Foul Play didn't, didn't do any more damage than that. Because Haxorus has an immense attack stat of like 147. Um, so I was like really surprised by that. So luckily we survived with 5 HP. I think it's due to uh, me having... Uh, reduced his attack stat like I said earlier so I was like oh man so we're just going to protect here and I'm just going to recover going for the safer play um because I'm not you know I'm not too sure if he has anything else up his sleeve with uh Torko like if it has uh you know Yawn or something else who knows um because <clears throat> well and it has eruption actually so Haxorus is going to avoid that ho is going to take some damage but again I have high special defense. Ah, uh, it still did a pretty decent chunk, a little bit more than 25 damage. So we're just gonna go for another breaking swipe and brave bird it for probably the win here. So uh, pretty good match for my ho ho and Torko. Uh, pfft, my Torko. Um, for my ho ho and Haxorus, Grimmsnarl did a lot of decent support with uh, reflecting light screen, and then Landorus did what it had to do, and that was the match. So thank you guys for tuning in, and expect more from me. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.